Greetings. Today, I'm going to challenge you just like I challenged myself. And I hope you participate in this. I hope you give your thoughts on what this topic is about because I think it's fascinating. So there's this podcast that comes on. Well, I actually watch it on YouTube. Actually, truthfully, I downloaded and converted it to an MP3 and I listened to it on my phone. Anyway, it's called All the Smoke and it's hosted by Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson, two former NBA players. Both of them ended up on championship teams. They weren't top stars, but they were essential to their teams winning. And what they do is they interview a lot of different athletes, not just basketball. They've done football. They've done baseball. They interview rappers. They interview some corporate guys. And they always end their program with basically one major question, which is name five people that you would love to have dinner with. So I guess it's not really a question, but in essence, it's a challenge. And it turns out that it's not the easiest thing to do off the cuff especially if you've got a lot of time in the game. For instance, I'm 62 and I have vacillated many times over the years when I've thought about people I would love to meet. For instance, do you want to just meet someone who's famous that, that you enjoy you know, what they do? You know, actors and musicians. Is that who you want to meet? Do you want to meet certain politicians? It's a tough question when you're kind of put right there you know, in the moment, and someone wants you to answer that question. And I decided to put some thought into mine because I've always wondered about this. You know, who would I actually want to sit down with? And it's not always been five people. A lot of times it's been just like one person at a time who I'd love to interview, or it's been as many as three, but five. Because you're hoping that if you sat down at dinner and you're hoping maybe it goes at least three hours that you would end up with this great conversation and you might learn something and you'd appreciate these folks. But at the same time, you don't want to, enter, you know, bring someone to the table who's going to mess up the situation and just ruin it for everybody because it would ruin it for you as well. So take some thought before you give your answer and let me know. So. Here's my five, and I can guarantee that one of them, you're, not, you're definitely not going to know, and another one, most probably, most of you aren't going to know. And I'm going to start with him. So my first person for dinner would be Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass was an abolitionist back in the 1850s, 1860s. Frederick Douglass is the one who convinced Abraham Lincoln to let black people into the army so that they could help fight against the South. And the fact that Abraham Lincoln would even meet with him shows you that as a black man who was a former slave who learned how to read, <laughs> which was against the law back then of all things. And, you know, just to show you that Lincoln actually met with him shows you that this is someone that he was respected and he actually ran the first black newspaper in the nation. And it would have just been so great to be able to sit down and have a regular conversation with him. Of course, you're looking at differences in language. You know, 170 years ago, there's different wording. I read his autobiography and I've read a couple of uh, reg regular biographies about him. And I think it would be fascinating. So y'all need to go look him up because really it's a fascinating story that he had. And next on my list would be Oprah Winfrey. Most of y'all are going to know Oprah Winfrey. All of you probably know Oprah Winfrey. And Oprah's story is once again interesting in the fact that, you know, she was born to a woman who basically a one night stand. Oprah met her father only once. She had, you know, another stepsister. She just went through a bunch of stuff, you know. And even once she finally got on TV, she realized, you know, at a certain point, I can only go so far working with some of these other people. When she found out that doing regular work, she was getting paid less for doing the exact same job everyone else was doing. And just look at what she has become. Now, there are some folks who don't like Oprah and they want to say, well, she's just self-serving or whatever. You know what? I think probably she's one of the 
most pure people you're ever going to meet. And sometimes that can be off-putting to some folks. They say, well, she just seems so full of herself. Well, you know, there's haters everywhere. <laughs> so Oprah would be next on my list. After that, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Truth be told, I've always loved to have thought of myself as a smart guy. I have read books on almost every different subject. And back in the day, I would have been great on Jeopardy. Now, not so much. Truth be told, Neil deGrasse Tyson, in my opinion, is one of the smartest men in the world. Probably one of the smartest men ever. He is an astrophysicist. He's the guy who indirectly got Pluto dropped from being a planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's the guy. And the thing is that he's more than just an Af uh, astrophysicist. He was a wrestler in college. He is a gourmet cook. He, I mean, he does tons of things. And he is on TV all the time on news and he does interviews and other things. I got to see him here in Syracuse once where he put on just, you know, basically two hours of talking about stuff, not just science stuff, but stuff in general. Fascinating guy. I would love to have him sit down with these people and all just talk. Next on the list, this one's a little odd. The reason I'm saying that is because he's a well-known name, at least he used to be before he passed away back in the 80s. But at the time, it's really weird to say this, I was not necessarily a fan of his until he won Wimbledon. I had read three books that he had written. And I was like, iffy. Why I still read three books? I don't know why. But I think there was something there that was telling me that this is a guy who's more than just an athlete. That man is Arthur Ashe. So Arthur Ashe, he won Wimbledon back in 1975. He was the first black player to get to, get to play in a tournament in South Africa. He basically fought for uh, black rights. But at one point, he was dating a white woman, and he writes in the book this problem that he had, how much he loved her, but he wasn't sure about the optics, and at a certain point, that's what ended that relationship because of the optics, and that bothered him because he thought that he should be able to, you know, live the life kind of that he wanted to, but he got out of love for this other thing. Anyhow... Then we get to the 80s, and Arthur Ashe was doing Arthur Ashe stuff, and then he had a transfusion, and he got AIDS. And then he became a major AIDS advocate. And there's still an Arthur Ashe Foundation, which helps to raise money for folks who have that problem. And, you know, he was a fascinating guy, long term. And I just think that would be a great person to have. So I have all that. And then the final person is my dad. And I would have to have dad there because he would, first he would love all of these people being there. Was not necessarily a big Oprah fan, but then again, a lot of older men weren't Oprah Winfrey fans. Heck, I wasn't an Oprah Winfrey, uh, Winfrey fan until probably early 2000s, I think. And then I read some stuff about her and I started watching the show a little bit here and then I said, you know what? She's pretty sharp. <laughs> so you got to give her credit for that. But I would have dad there because dad had certain things happen in his life that I learned about probably only within the last four or five years. For instance, dad was both in the army and the air force, which I knew. I didn't know that he'd been shot in Korea and he'd also been shot in Vietnam. I didn't know that. I didn't know that even though my dad joined the army at age 17, because back then the military Air Force did not allow black people in the Air Force. Anyway, what I didn't know is that before them, he was an advocate for the rights of black people. And he actually got mad at my uncle for joining the service at the time. Uh, during World War II, and he was mad at him because he said, you know, they're just not going to treat you right. But then after dad's mother passed away on his 17th birthday, he joined the army and he stayed in for 26 years. But he still did certain things where he stood up to, 
quote unquote white authority because he was in the service and he had given his, well, he put his life on the line for the country and he felt that he deserved to have uh, equal treatment from everybody. And he was respected by a lot of officers. And then when he got out of service, he had to get first a high school degree because he left school before he graduated high school. Then he got a bachelor's degree with two majors and he got it just before me, which was irksome, but you know, that, that was a challenge. And then he basically did some things at Xerox that he kept getting trophies for. And he never really talked about it because that's just that generation. That's how they were. And so those would be my five people. I think it would be a fascinating dinner. And I'd like you guys to do the same thing. I'd like you to think about it and leave down below five people that you would love to have at a dinner. And if you want to explain why, if you don't want to explain why, that's okay also, but I would just love to know. Anyway, my name is Mitch Mitchell. Different, but I think it would be fun. Y'all take care.